Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you to all our loyal watchers that are here every night, no matter what. You guys are here, rain, sleet, or shine. You guys are so loyal and devoted to us, and we feel it's such a blessing to have you guys with us every night. I'm excited for the guests that we have. You guys know how I am when it comes to studying the NDEs. This gentleman, I was compelled to get in touch with after watching his NDE. It was the absolute most compelling NDE as far as a hell experience that I've ever witnessed. And you guys know I've studied thousands of them. Uh, I was I absolutely had to get in touch with him. Luckily, the, the podcast that I... Uh, I saw the video on, his email was in the description, and when literally within an hour of me emailing him, he answered. Um, but it's, I, I can't say enough, is just grateful that he's here because I feel like it's so imperative that folks understand the grim reality um, that we're in. You know, there's, you have two options in this world. You have Christ, which salvation is a free gift for everybody, or you can choose not Christ. There's no, there's no third options. That's it. You got one or the other. A lot of folks are in denial that that's as simple as it is, but that's the, that's the truth. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Dominic. It's, it's, it's either Christ or not Christ. There's, there's no variant options. Oh, Hey, uh, you've muted yourself. You muted yourself. Um, still says you're muted. Hey, when, uh, when you oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. We're good. Go ahead. Hello. Yes, uh, he's the brother is absolutely correct. You know, we as human beings, uh, we always like to do things to make us comfortable. So I guess in our imaginations, we created this limbo stage with this. And there's no there's no he's right. It's either you're on this side of that side, like the book of James said, you're either with the world or you with God. And uh, unfortunately and fortunately, I learned the hard way. I did. I, I learned the hard way. I um, I know you did. Yeah, I grew up in Chicago. You know, um, father passed away when I was three years old. You know, Chicago, some parts of it is like a third world country. You know, it's no joke. It, it, it's really no joke. My mom, you know, uh, bless the Lord now, but she was a, addicted to crack cocaine. So that just made me and my little brother and sister's life even worse. I was the oldest. And, uh, you know, in my neighborhood, uh, if you grew up in the projects, pretty, you know, Chicago's rough. But um, around my housing project, our superstars were drug dealers and pimps and athletes. You know, those are your only three options a way of, of, you know, pretty much escaping that environment. So I chose to sell the drugs, you know. And, and in Chicago, you just can't sell drugs unless you're a part of a gang. So I had to join the gang to sell the drugs. So that's a double whammy right there. Um, All right. Yeah, I joined when I was 12 years old. I'm not going to say the name of the street organization. I don't want to give them no, any credit at all because credit is not due. Um, but I did join the organization when I was 12 years old, and they put me to work right away. Um, school was my only sanctuary because that's how I know God was in my heart, you know, and, uh, and really, really blessed me because school was my place of peace. But outside of that, it was, it was wartime all the time. But I got pretty good as the years went on. Um, I dabbled to different in different spiritualities because I always wanted to find God, you know, and I did part of my culture, you know, the Cuban part and we got Puerto Ricans in our family, a lot of different mixtures, but they studied a lot of them. And a lot of my friends were studying Santeria at the time. It's very prevalent, you know, in the Afro Latino uh, communities and um, a lot, you know, like yeah. that Santeria is no joke. You all it's, it's no game yeah. like playing the Ouija yeah. boards. Don't don't interfere. Don't tap with none of this stuff. It's not a game. Oh, no. Lucifer always disguises himself as an angel of light, you all. He always, always comes with sweet things, but you eat too much candy for a whole year, what happens to you? Yeah. It's, it's good at first, but you're going to have to pay for those consequences. You're going to have to pay for eating all that candy. But just like yeah. people don't read the fine line when you're signing your life over for material things to these demons, that's all it is. I don't care how you want to address the name. They're the fallen angels, and uh, they give yeah. deals. They don't care about material possession. That's why they'll give you whatever you want, but you own the real possession which is yeah. your allegiance and your soul that is beyond is priceless. You don't even know that, but yet you treat it like you're going to the pawn shop. And that's what yeah. you do when you, when you trade these things with these demonic beings and they don't need you to believe in them. 
They don't care if you to believe. They don't want you to believe in them so they can get you. Because how can you uh, a conquer an enemy that you don't even know is real? Yeah. So, yeah, you, you, you're, you're spot on, you know. But, yeah, growing up, like I said, it was hard. But um, along the way, uh, I started developing some, some enemies in my own circle because I was doing better than them financially. And that always happens. There's always those that are closest to you that the enemy will use. But I'm just going to forward back down. You know, I got real good at the game. Uh, yeah, a little too good, honestly. We were too comfortable. But back in 2009, June 9th, this is when it happened. I, uh, in Chicago, we have a, a ritual, so to speak. You know, every week we go to the nightclub. I'm sure a lot of you guys do, you know, you know, uh, get dressed up. You got to get a new outfit. So we always go shopping the day of for a new outfit. So I go shopping, me and my friend. In my district where I live, it was 500,000 people just in the district. So it's so crowded. It's unlikely that you would keep running into a person, especially different, different sides of your district. So that's kind of unheard of. When we came out the first store, I saw this gentleman. He was leaning on his car, and instantly in my stomach, I just felt like something is not right. But he looked at us. He glanced. He just said, hey. And so I said, hey, what's up with him? And kept walking. Went to another store. A couple of hours later, I come out the store. It's the same guy sitting on the car in the front of the store. So I looked at my friend. I said, hey, man, this guy's following us. This guy, some man, and then my friend said, man, you've been smoking too much weed. <laughs> Smacked me the back of the head and said, dude, you're not that important. Ain't nobody following you, man. Ain't nobody following us. So I said, okay, you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm just tripping here. Well, we get dressed later on that night. We come out my building. It's the same guy. He's standing, leaning on the gate in front of the building. Now, this time I said, okay, I got I to gotta ask where this guy is from. I have to, you know, check his temperature, so to speak. So as I walk up to him, he had a cigar in his mouth and he said, hey, folks, do you have a lighter? I said, yeah. And I was going to as I'm digging for the lighter, I'm going to ask him a question. I was going to ask him, where do I know you from? And then all of a sudden I saw a green flash. It was a green flash. I didn't I didn't I didn't hear anything. I didn't feel anything. I just saw a bright green light. And but it's like everything went in slow motion. And the second time I looked up and he had the gun reached again. And he shot me again. Wow. Now, that time, I heard it, smelt it, felt it. It smelled like uh, burning matches, like if you were to burn a whole book of matches. That's what it smelled like. And when I felt it was a force, like the velocity pushed me back, so I started to fall backwards. Now, this is where the spiritual component comes in. Like I tell everyone, when I, when I start falling backwards, it's this darkness, instant darkness, but I knew I was falling on my back, but yet I started falling forward. Even though I was laying on my back, I was falling face down, falling down forward. That already just, the, yeah, my equilibrium was thrown, everything was thrown off at that point. It just like, first, and then the darkness, okay? People, it's not a darkness like here on earth. Um, you, you can blindfold yourself, you can put yourself under the ground. No, this darkness is alive. It's moving you can feel it. through, you, through you, like, and then when it does that, it's, it's draining you, everything of you. And as I'm falling, See, once I want people to understand when you're when you're in eternity, your awareness and your knowledge is heightened. You yes. don't lose your five senses. You can still see, taste, touch, me, and they're high, super heightened, times a million. It's like it's it's a different, um, it's a whole different texture of seeing, a whole different texture of hearing, smelling. It's a different. It's the category of it is just it it, it just heightened. That's the best way I can explain. Magnified. It's, to, it's magnified. Yes. 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 You know, um, but as I'm falling through this darkness, I already know that it's stripping me of things. It's stripping me of everything God gave me. I'm talking about the feeling of fellowship, hope, happiness, just all everything that was good in me. I can f literally feel it coming out of my personality. That's the best way I can describe that. And the more and more and the faster I'm falling, the more and more terrified I was getting. Because see, in hell, okay, and in eternity, everything, like you said, is, is, is maximized, right? So here we don't understand that God gives us so many, so many things, so many safety buffers, so many things to guard us. We take it for granted. And I, now I get it because in hell, you know, here on earth, you only can get so scared. You have a limit to your fear. You only can be so exasperated, so just terrified. Not there. Your highest peak, you're going to another level of fear. Just when you think you could be, it starts on even a higher level. And in a higher, it never stops. The fear and the terror doesn't stop. Okay? Now, as I'm falling in this darkness, the first thing I noticed was a smell. This smell was so bad. I'm talking about there is no way you can be human here and smell it and live. 
There's no way. Yeah. It's worse than any worse nerve gas, any kind of thing that the, the, the government could put out to use as a weapon. If this was a weapon, it would kill countries instantly. Put it that yeah. way. Just the smell. The smell is uh -huh. even spiritual, you all. The smell yeah. is not even natural. So it's unfalling. Then I see this little light is unfalling. Okay. Then I feel like a, a, a stroke of heat, but that's when it get me. What got me is the, this portal is getting bigger and bigger. Then I can hear the screams. That's what, and I, you know, the, the, the regret and the anger, the sorrow. See, like I explain to people, when you're on the other side, everything is totally different. So just say if you was in a stadium, a football stadium, watching a game in the venue, and you hear the crowd screaming, you can't really make out individual sounds because it's so crowd but there you can individualize each conversation each scream simultaneously at the same time pretty much at the same time all and you and i knew it had to be hundreds of millions maybe billions screaming but you can hear each individual one at the same time could you could you um focus and know instantly about things yes see that's another thing i'm glad you brought that up when you when you're there when i was in hell I can look at a person and instantly know why they're there. How long, like what era they were from, why they were there. Because people need to realize we have a, a wide spectrum scale of sins. We all do. Right. But everyone has what I, I coined the specialty, your specialty sin that sticks out most prevalently in your personality. Whether it be uh, of sexual things, whether it be gossiping, whether it be stealing, everyone has one main sin that sticks out more than the others than you do daily, right? right. That's why I call it the specialty sin, right? Yeah. So hell is so organized that it has compartments and departments specializing in your specialty sin. Yeah. So whatever sin weighs the most on your heart is what department you're getting assigned to. That's the theme that I saw there. And uh, uh, yeah, you, and you, you definitely know why they're there. You definitely know yeah. instantly. Yeah, it, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bizarre. Like I said, I learned more in hell than I have all the years here on earth. Isn't that something? Uh, yeah. Another thing, another thing that I've heard through studies is the heat is so intense that you physically could not survive, but your body is able to, your spirit is able to in that world. It's thousands yes. of degrees, and you can barely breathe that you're gasping for air. Yes. And see, the thing is, when, when I when I fell through that portal, OK, I really, really I, I realized instantly it, it was like a well. But the light that I was seeing is because the, the stones of the rocks were so hot, they were yellow, orange and white. So when I got it's literally like sucked me through, then I was in that darkness. In that darkness again, this is what's going to answer what you were just talking about. I saw a flame illuminate in front of me. It was one pit, but it illuminated the whole area that I was in. It was just full of pitch, rolls and rolls down. Now, I couldn't even get up. It felt like I was in a thousand pound wetsuit. Yeah, that's well, what I, I hear is that you have no energy to move whatsoever. No uh, matter what you want to do, nope. um, your, your freedom to move is provided by God. And you've been stripped of everything that is been God. Stripped so of everything. So yeah, you don't even I'm have saying. that bill. You have no ability to move. No, you don't. And that's when you realize everything comes from God. That's what I kept yeah. saying in my mind. It's like you instantly start regretting. You start instantly talking to God because you know, even just to move like this, it's God. And even sleep. There, so, yeah. Oh, there's no rest. There's yeah. no nap. There's no drink of water. There's none of that. I feel like I, and I just got arrived there and I felt like I haven't eaten in months. Yeah. Drinking in months it, it's beyond. Like I say, everything I, I'm trying to get close to it in words, but yeah. it, it's not doing it any justice because it, it is. <laughs> yeah, the thirst is not a thirst. I'd rather be thirsty here than thirsty there. I can tell you that just for starters, because it's yeah. a different it's a different thing. And then I was trying to breathe. And the fact is, there's no air down there. I, I just got snatched out of my body. So I was so used to being in my physical body, not relating that I was in my spiritual form. So I was so used to it. So then I started really panicking because I was trying to breathe and couldn't breathe. It's like, you can't, and you, you're trying to pant and it's like nothing. So then you start freaking out more than I'm looking ahead of me. It's the first pit. Now, when it illuminated, there were rows of pits perfectly aligned and miles as far as you are. I'm talking about miles and miles of these pits full of people. Had to be a hundred to a couple of hundred, maybe a thousand in each in these pits. Okay. And around these pits were these big, demons but they look like rep reptilian reptile look 
I kept seeing, I yeah. noticed a, a lot of them have different animal looks, though. A lot of them do look like uh, spiders, like, like insects and stuff like that. But the most that I saw that were kind of running the show were like the reptile, the, the reptilian ones and the giants. Some of them 13 to 18 feet tall, very muscular, uh, blood red shot eyes uh, with the slit down the middle. And some of them have bright yellow ones with the slit down the middle. And then I noticed that the demons, though, the worst ones were the tiny ones, were the little ones. I keep telling everybody. The big ones yeah. are ferocious, very strong, but it's the little ones like this big. Some of them smaller than this pen are the right. most. And, and, you know, and that's why I try to explain to people. That's why I don't believe in racism. I don't believe in none of this, because once you encounter the enemy, you're going to run to another human being so fast and hug them like it's nothing. Because this enemy, you all hate you so much. If God didn't have a supernatural protection, just their hate would kill you. They won't even have to touch you. Just the hate they have for you will destroy you. Because we're made in the you. image, we're made in the image of God. So that's yes. why they hate us so bad. They hate, hate. I'm talking about hate is uh, hate is love compared to yeah. how they feel to me. Put it that way, and yeah. you would die literally. God protects us from so much, and we take it for granted. We have no clue what He protects us from every day, every day, all day. If y'all can see in the spiritual realm, was was literally calling you leg pain, causing you leg pain, causing you a headache, causing you depression, causing you anxiety. If you can really see it hanging around you, if you can really tap in and see what's causing that, it's going to change everything. Because yeah. that's, I'm telling you, there are a lot of natural things, but these days there are more supernatural things happen to cause you depression and pain than there are natural. I can guarantee yeah. you that. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And, uh, you know, as I'm laying there, okay, I'm now I'm beyond, like I say, fear is not even a word. I can't move, I can't breathe, and I'm trying to crawl away because this big, the one, the, the giant demon, he had to be, I'm telling you, 13, 18 feet tall. I'm just guesstimating at this point. He looked, and the smile that he gave me was like, you next, kind of, and I'm trying to move. No, I'm not. I'm trying to move around, and I'm so panicking right at this point. I feel a big claw. I feel a big hand grabbing the back of the head, and the finger has to be like this thick, and then the the, the nail was like this long and sharp, and I can fit. It grabbed me and it just threw me like I was a piece of paper, like I was nothing. Like the strength of these things, the power of these things, you can work out all day. You ain't nothing compared to these things. These yeah. things, it, it just threw me like I was, get over there. Like, and I flew so fast and so hard, I hit the side of the stone wall and I looked up, it was a mountain, but in the mountain, it was carved all of these cells, like jail cells, the old school jail cells, bars, ancient, very ancient. That's the first thing I knew. This place here is ancient. Biblical days, ancient. People been here since the biblical times. Like yeah. historical, biblical times. People been in there. And I instantly knew why they were in there. Because they yeah. were studying uh, 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 witchcraft. They were worshiping demons. They were worshiping earth. They were worshiping these, all the people that influence all other people to go worship other things besides God. Yeah. And they've been there for a long time. Wow, yeah, long, long, very long. Some of them were so been there so long, they started to look like the demons. Yeah. They were so angry, they were screaming, they were just blasphemous things. See, there in the spirit body, curse words hurt your physical, they hurt your body. They literally hurt. Even when the demons had their own language, when they were talking to each other, you knew what they were saying, but their language is so foul, it hurts every time they speak. Every time you hear their language, it hurts your body. It hurts. Yeah. It physically hurts. Yeah. I, you know, there's just so many details here on earth that we don't know about. And that's I why we're, that there, we're losing. I heard there was uh, big worms everywhere. Oh, yeah. they were. That's 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 what I encountered when I first laid down and then he threw me against the stone wall. These things are like thick as soda cans. Yeah. They're not like, see, the insects in hell. They, see, hell is on earth. Let me make this clear for you guys. But it's in a different dimension. It's, it's here on earth, but it's in a different dimension on earth. It is definitely down, and it's definitely here, and it is definitely on earth, just in a different dimension. So the worms and the insects in that dimension are two two to five times bigger and more aggressive. They have teeth. like They're not like the maggots here. They, 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 like, they just chompers. And they would think they surrounded me, okay, to a point where this is the part I was going to get to because when I, when I actually tried to lean up and stand up, these things were surrounding me. Not only were they surrounding me like here on earth, you can kick them off. No, they were going through me. And just remember, guys, I'm telling you, they go through you. It's, it's supernatural. It's not 
you know, here we got the flesh. You got to wait for them to chew through your flesh. It will, you know, but no, they go through. You can feel them in you, and they just chewing out. And let me tell you about pain, you all. When you're in your spirit body, you don't have a nervous system. See, the nervous system, you know, pretty much keep pain to where it is. That's why it's just sending a signal to know something's going on in a particular part of your body. But in the, in the spiritual realm, you don't have that. If I was to stab you in your hand, you're feeling it from your head to your feet all at the same time. There's no compartmentalization in your pain. It, it's all at one time. You just don't feel something in your arm and go, ah, no, you get hit in the arm, you, your whole body. That's what makes the torture so worse. Also, that you keep growing back your limbs. If your face or your arm gets snatched off, it's coming right back. Yeah. It's coming right back. Right back. Yeah. Now, as I'm trying to stand up and I'm freaking out, leaning on this stone wall, trying not to hit the bars because the, the, these cells were three, like three feet apart. And there's another cell, three feet stone apart. Boom, boom, boom. So I'm trying to lean up against it. And you got these people screaming. They had no idea I was there, by the way, because that's another thing that comes from God is fellowship. There's no fellowship there. There's no way we can band together in hell and have a conversation and play some cards and some dice like we in jail. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. There's no fellow. You can be standing right next to somebody and scream. They're not going to pay attention to you because they're so much in their own torment and regret. They're not paying attention to you. So to all those who say, yes, I see this person in hell. I see that. I don't know how. I didn't recognize anybody that I knew because you're so much in your own fright. You can see somebody you knew. You're not thinking about them. I can promise you, you're not thinking about nobody on earth. Yeah. I'm just telling you, it, it, yeah. it's, it, you don't have time for all of that. And that's how I knew that the Lord was with me the whole time. Because the, first of all, now in hindsight, the way he was showing me the different departments and also how he's, he, these demons wanted to, they did some stuff to me. Like they ripped my jaw open and poured lava all down my throat and did stuff. And I still didn't feel the intense all the way pain. And I knew that for some reason. So I knew that yeah. was the Lord. just giving me a little spanking, a little preview and then these things, the demons, they wanted me so bad, but they couldn't touch me. They couldn't touch me. So now in hindsight, I knew he had to be standing there with me. He had to be there with me, just giving me a little yeah. tour of what, but they couldn't touch me. He let me get yeah. beat up. I, I got enough. I can tell you that I wouldn't even have to have gotten beat up and still had enough. But I hear that often. Yeah. And I, I got thrown. I got flung again. It was just like kind of like a, it's a suction, but it sucks your whole you know, I can't, it's like you can hear, but you, you feel here. I don't know how to even explain it. It was just, yeah. and it's just, you feel it and you hear it at the same time. It's just, it's weird. But now this part, this is where, you know, uh, I, I try to always, it's a lot of stuff that'll be out. The book, but I can't get too descriptive because, yeah, you get red flag all day. But I came to the <laughs> part, for real. Yeah, I'm yeah, serious. You're right. You're, you're yeah, right. I know. Bad. It, it gets yeah. bad. But I, I went to the sexual part compartment of hell and department of hell may i say and uh the first thing i noticed was this young lady on a stone slab being raped by demons and it's the it's beyond you could take the worst x-rated movie here on earth and it ain't nothing that yeah. uh, that is nothing to what they were doing to this young lady every hole in her body was getting penetrated eye sockets nose ears everything just mauled and she's coming right back together like it's uh yeah. You all, especially if you're sexually uh, promiscuous, men and women, I advise y'all to chill out. I advise you to get it right because yeah. you're gonna. I'm just. I advise you to get it right. I'm, I'm just yeah. telling you. It, it 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 threw off my whole sex game for a long time. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I, no, I'm just I mean, honest. hey, it, it threw my whole. Uh, hey, I'm cool on that. You can have that. <laughs> I'm saying. I'm uh, just I can't you, even imagine. Real. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, what they and then what they were doing to the men as well. I call it the human shish kebabs, like these giants, the 18, 15 foot. They had these poles and they would grab a man. And everybody's naked, too, by the way. You're naked. Only people I saw on were clothes were that's just a, I'm about to tell you that in a second. But they had a big spear pole and they were taking the men, put it under their private part, put like five, four to five on a big pole and they put them on their shoulder and carry them off somewhere in hell and they screaming like a shish kebab stick. They were taking a man's own penises and raping them with them. Like stuff you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Like a lot of females who like to give fake body parts and stuff like that to entice men for, for sexual advances. They were making them eat their own body parts, making them eat their own buttocks, their own lips, their own breasts. They were making them eat their own stuff that caused men to stumble. I'm just, y'all, yeah. it just gets so deep. It, it is very deep. And it all corresponds with your specialty. 
Yeah. What's your specialty? What's your specialty? Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, it, it, it's the truth, guys. I mean, folks in the chat that that maybe are apprehensive. Look, I've been you know that I've been studying this for years. And the reason I was so compelled to reach out to him is he's one of the the only NDEs that everything he said checked the box. And it's he's not lying. I know. No, hey, listen, and I tell people all the time, I'm not here. The Lord didn't bring me back to convince you. I don't argue about my experience. I'm here to just to drop off a package. It's like the UPS yeah. man, whatever you do, once I did my job, I gave you the package. Whatever you do with it, it's on you. So I'm not here to make you believe me. I'm not here to make you unbelieve me. I'm here to do what the Lord told me to do and to tell you about this place is real, that you guys need to um, start moving and living with a sense of urgency because eternity lives behind every moment. Yeah. Um, we just lost seven people here in two months. Okay. And I had plans. They had plans for next week. Death was not on their schedule and now they're in eternity. See, I so if you guys you know, keep here. gambling with your, you know, keep, keep playing with your eternity. It's your choice. He doesn't force you to, um, he don't want nobody to go there. First of all, that wasn't even created for us, but he does also doesn't violate our free will. So if we want to hang with our big brothers, the fallen angels and be like them, then we're going to have the same repercussions. That's it. Well, well said. Yeah, and it's like the juvenile system here, right? What do they do when they think of juvenile? They charge them as an adult, don't they? They trial them as an adult, and that's what's happened to mankind. Since we want to be active like fallen angels, we're being tried as fallen angels. You're absolutely right. That's it. So uh, you Con know, continue on, man. I'm in. I'm, yes, uh, yes. I, I haven't been this locked in on a story and someone's experience i can't remember the last time this stuff is it's gripping it's my sole motivation on why Amen. i witness so hard because i know the truth you know Amen. i've watched some of the heaven ndes but they don't interest me as much as the hell ndes because that fear that the whole reason we do everything we do is Spirit. so that we and the folks we love don't end up there. We can already assume that up there it's going to be beautiful. But folks need to wrap their head around what's going on below us. It's yeah, and not I got some bad news. Yep, and I have bad news for a lot of people who thought, you know, that, you know, my baby's looking down on me from heaven. I'm sorry, ma'am. You know, he's not. I'm just, we got to be honest with it, you know. Um, yeah. Everybody wants their ears, their ears tickled. And that's what I learned. Like, I got, okay, just say when I saw the sexual part, I got, it's like, suck me again, and I'm getting spit out. See, that's why I realized hell has so many different departments. And you guys, like I tell everybody, you wouldn't believe who the most, the overcrowding section of hell is. It's gossipers. Yeah. Gossipers. Gossipers, people, have the big, what I experienced, what I saw. I may be wrong. I'm just going off my experience. It was the biggest place in unforgiveness was number two, if you ask me. Gossiping. Because people don't understand. And those were the people that were clothed. Like the, the, the I call them the fake pastors. They had their, their, their um, suits on. Uh, I saw rabbis. I saw all kinds of people. They were dressed. But they were waiting in this like little tunnel thing. And demons would come and just snatch them up at will. They were just waiting to get tortured. And what they were doing to them pastors... And, and fake rabbis and all of this. <sighs> yeah, especially the, the people who claim to be that they love the Lord and they gospel behind people back and they gossip in church and they gossip in that. They get tortured so bad because they consider sellouts. Because you see, once you give your life to the Lord, you get a mark. You receive a mark in the spiritual realm. You receive a mark. And you, you Every, cast stumbling blocks in front of people and it can be... You, you could cost someone their salvation because you casted a stumbling yes. block in front of them. That's why yes. Christ and God takes this so serious. Because we are here to help as many come to the Lord, not discourage them. Amen. Amen. And that, that's the problem. Like, once you give your life to the Lord, you're no longer a regular human being. You're considered an ambassador from the kingdom of heaven. You're commissioned to live different, move different, walk different, talk different, go the extra mile, go the extra two miles. We don't have extraordinary faith. We have ex extra ordinary faith. We go beyond the length of just, I just made it faith. So once you give your life truly over to him, you're, you're being, that's why he said you're called out. You're called out to be something completely different. 
Yeah. We're, we're supposed to hold ourselves as completely different standards, period. Like, you know what I mean? So people don't take it lightly. But those people I saw for gossiping were getting every torture that you can imagine done to them. As far as big rusty uh, 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 nails being, they, they had a whole long table full of them. They'd take their tongues as far as out, and they'd take these big rusty hammers with big nails and screws and banging their, their tongues into these things. And then the littler demons will come at the person's feet and snatch their body off what their tongue is still on the... Yeah, it's a game to them. They're down there having fun because, like I'm explaining to everyone, our depression, our aggression... Anger, sense of loss, anxiety, fears, doubts are all food for these things. Yeah. Literal food. They feed they off eat. your fear. They feed off that. Your energy that you produce of being all of those symptoms I just named, they are eating from you. That's why they always, this world is in, kept in a state of flux and everybody's always tense and never have enough in stress because they having a, a buffet out of you. They keeping you and, in these conditions on purpose so they can eat. And that's prevalent right now in our physical world when you allow that anger to overcome you and that sense of just rage, you're literally feeding the demons. Literally. If, like he said, if you could see in the spiritual world what's going on around you, it would blow your mind. Yeah, you would stop doing a lot of things. You would yeah. stop saying a lot of things. You would stop hanging with a lot of people. In places full of demons everywhere everywhere yeah. which you wouldn't, you wouldn't even imagine you wouldn't even imagine the people that worship these things behind the scenes either yeah yeah you know yeah it, it's uh it's deep but you know so that's why i say very be careful because the biggest place i saw that i personally saw was gossipers because it destroys lives on levels you can't even see you know the tongue yeah. is a powerful weapon like the book of james was explaining i need to read the book of james on that too about that tongue but, you know, I, I just know you all, the more and more people don't understand, like there's the races, they have a racist section in, in hell when they all they were doing is getting big boulders dropped on them repeatedly. Big boulders splatted, they splatted. I'm talking about splat and they'll be right back in line. They have a whole line. They come, you will re reappear right back in line and they drop a boulder on you. I don't even know the, the, the because everything I start noticing, it started having things behind the punishment. I started noticing the torture has some kind of routine. That's what made me put together. Wait a minute. These are different compartments here. These are different compartments because you see people with sin. Just say if someone has a double sin, right? Just say if you are a promiscuous alcoholic, right? You know what they do? They're very creative. So you know what they do to alcoholics there? They they, buzz, they pull your mouth open and make you drink hot lava. It's like me because I was an alcoholic, addicted to marijuana. I was, I was a womanizer. You know what I mean? It was all about me. I was selfish. So you you you're not just getting one. You you will get the, your 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 main punishment for what department you in. But it's gonna be a whole buffet full of everything too. You're not just gonna get one thing and think no. They're doing all types of stuff, inviting other demons to come, laughing, telling them to come and get some. Drag you off to their department, wherever they're doing. It's just a field day for these things down there. It's Never a field ending. day. Yeah, it's a Never field ending. day. Never ending. Yeah, and this, I, I think, I call this personally, it was the center of hell. Because of this big pit, it was so big. And then, um, I don't know, everybody, I'm old school, you know, the water beds. You remember the water beds? You know how the water bed moves? Yeah. That's how the ground there moves in that part of hell. It was like a water bed. It was almost like it was alive. Like everywhere yeah. I stepped, it was just moving like water, like water was under it. But what got my attention was this big, this beast that was in this pit, I didn't even have to see it. I didn't even see it, but you can hear the chains on it. Like you can hear it. It was so upset. It was, it was, l let me tell you this. Lucifer is not the most powerful fallen angel. He's not, he's the smartest one. He may be the most cunning one, but he's not the most powerful one. When the Lord wasn't lying, when he said there are some demons that had to be locked up, I, one of them was locked up, and let me tell you, and by the way, they're going to be released too, unfortunately. He's going to release them. He's going to let them be released. But the power behind this thing, the, the spiritual force behind this thing, I didn't even see it. I didn't even have to see it. 
But I know if this was released on earth, it's over with. Every, that's why he said if, if he didn't come and stop it, there'd be no flesh left alive. Left uh, alive. Yeah. That's what I, I know that was one of the parts when he was talking about this thing in there. It was so angry and it was moving, and you can hear the whole literally everything. It was moving, and then these hot white coals would come flying out of the pit, and then the big uh, the eighteen foot giants would come in with the people they had in their hand would come and grab these hot coals and would stuff them in their face, like laughing, grabbing people, stuffing these hot. And they like, yeah, it, it's just, it, it's, it's order in that chaos, you all. It's very chaotic, but it's ordered. Just like, and, and also in that pit, I saw coming out of that pit, up and down, it was like black smoke. Black is the blackness I was talking about. It was going, it was flying up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And I immediately already knew. I knew, it. before I came to ask my own mind, I knew what those were. It was a demons. See, every demon has a job. They work 24 seven. They do not rest. They are at, I'm talking about, they go hard. That's why I notice a lot of Santorians, a lot of Satan and Lucifer worship, they go hard. We as so-called Christians, we can get a Lord not even two hours a week. Come on people, come on people. I know Luciferians who are dedicated. They dedicated to their dark Lord, but we can't even give our Lord five minutes after work, huh? Yeah, but yeah I shared that. Yeah. I shared a I shared a video series uh, video series that um, you might be interested in. It, it's something most people haven't seen, but it's an ex Satanist of twenty five years, and he's come to Christ now. But uh, some of the guests are like, "That's too fantastic." I'm like, "No, this is real." Uh, I'll email it to you because he is so okay. yeah. detailed in everything <laughs> that they do. They go hard. And they live for it, and they're focused every day. I'm just trying to tell you, they go super hard. Like even when I was practicing Santeria, it's a lot of discipline, it's a lot of dedication, it's a lot of money. It's a lot that you have to do to keep to keep these principalities uh, happy. See, they, they don't tell you that. Once they got you, you got you ain't no contract. You gonna keep you going. You I didn't know. I didn't know about the. Uh... The the big um, fallen angel or the big uh, demon. Uh, oh, the one. He, listen, this thing. You can feel even when it was. It's not even a growl. This thing was like. I didn't even. I could, like I said, I couldn't even see it. I can hear the chains. I can hear the. It's just yeah. It was way more more powerful than Lucifer. Lucifer is just the smartest. I think. That's just my personal opinion. But I know I wonder, there's some out there that had to be chained up. I, and I, I those, wonder. I, I, one of them. I wonder which which one it is. I remember in Genesis um, when um, God bound some of them in the pit. Some of the fallen angels were bound that must down be one there. One of them because yeah, yeah, because they were chained up. I mean, the one I I saw and heard, like I, I, I'm told you, I can't even have to see it. You can visualize how big the chains probably were you yeah. can you know how those big ships have the, the cruise ships the liners had those big anchors and the big chains yeah I, that just went to my mind them things are chained up with things probably stronger bigger than that but yeah. he, he had to but he says he's letting them out though he's yeah. releasing no them. He, you're right he, he's releasing them i'm gonna I shut my that. door hold on yeah yeah he's definitely releasing them so yeah, but what I what what, what I you know, um, there's so many things like I tell you people, please forgive everybody when you got a chance. Just because you forgive a person doesn't mean you have to hang with them and kumbaya friends all over again. But you have to, you cannot go to paradise with one strap no worth of, of unforgiveness in your heart. He does not yeah. tolerate that because he forgives you seven times a thousand times a day. And he said, who are you not to forgive somebody else? You're arrogant. I forgave you for this. I saved you from this. I did this for you. But you got the nerve. When I asked you to forgive somebody, you're too cocky. He doesn't play with unforgiveness, you all. So if hey, you man. have some, like I say, that don't mean you have to be the person's buddy or friend. You don't have to hang with them at all. But you have to literally let that out of your heart because that will send you straight to hell. People don't understand. Don't be, don't be mad at God. We need to be mad at these churches. That lied to us about how far the bar was pulled down. See, the, God never changed any of these rules. We did as society so we can get Amen. more comfortable with our sending. So the enemy can get more in closer and closer. We did this to ourselves. 
The father's bar for how he wants to be worshipped never changed. It's always been up here. We decide we move it down here. We've been deciding how we want to worship him. But guys, it don't count. It don't work You're like that. Right. He's a lot more You're sterner than you right. think. He's not no just no, you know, fake soft guy. And no, our Lord is super stern. He does not play around. He's not That's playing. The, he is all love, but he's not playing. The Bible makes it extremely clear. The path is wide mm -hmm. to destruction, to death, and the path yeah. to life yeah. is narrow. When it says very few will find it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, just think about it. Out of a thousand people, maybe two would make it. Though that ratio, them numbers are not looking good. Out of a thousand, maybe two would make it. Maybe. Yeah. You know, Very so few. you guys, you know, and the whole point of, of hell, they don't want you to believe in it. You know, it reminds me, just say if we would go to another foreign country. All right, we're all in foreign countries. We go to the other person's country, and I don't believe in their jail system. I say jail don't exist here. I can do whatever I want. Jail, that jail in that country don't need me to believe in it. I bet you they'll lock my butt up, though, wouldn't they? I bet you yeah. it'll exist. It didn't need me to exist. It didn't need my belief for it to exist. It don't need your belief. It don't want your belief. It wants you not to believe. For real. It, it, it don't do and listen the hatred i keep saying it guys we got to stick together because we have a real common enemy and they they did a great job of making us divisive and being divided over the stupidest things that's another thing they call us in hell is stupid humans and that's an understatement Amen. that's just the closest i can get to it i mean unintelligent yeah. stupid any any word you want to think of is still not going to come close to the disrespectfulness and how they call us and what they treat us like their language alone, I told you, their language alone would, would, would hurt you. It, it, would, yep. it, it can be weaponized, for real, literally. Their language can be rep weaponized. You know, uh, I just tell everybody, please, this place is it's not even real. It's beyond real. See, the spiritual realm is really what exists. Everything here in the physical realm material, is the leftovers. It's like a dream. This is all leftovers. This is all leftovers. Look at everything physically. This shirt I'm wearing, it was in somebody's imagination. What are the imagination? That's spirit world. And the leftover manifestation of this is just, boom, it came from the spirit world. So everything yeah. you're touching physically is leftovers. But Lucifer got you thinking the leftovers are the original. Wasting your time on leftovers. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I just, you know, people need to just really, really, really start, start moving different, start thinking different. And stop playing games because the only valuable thing you have is your relationship with him. That's the what only I thing. Tell. If you don't know him, you're done. You're done. I don't I care tell. if you went to church, volunteered, gave your money. If you don't know him, you're done. That's Folks, it. What do I say? What do I say every night to you guys? And you're absolutely right. He just wants a personal relationship with you. Yeah. You don't want anything else. No mantras, no traditions. No flipping around, no no coins, no incense. No, he even said that in Amos uh, chapter five, verse eighteen. He don't care about none of that. He just wants your righteous heart. He just wants to see if you. he just wants you. Yep. He just wants you. Amen. He don't want none of that stuff. So you go to these churches and they tell me, "Oh, God wants you to have a new car. He wants you to have a new." No, he don't. He wants you to have a new heart. He wants you to have a new Amen. mind. He wants you Amen. to have a new relationship, a new sense of purpose, of courage for him. That's it. Is when God give you a gift, it always comes in the form of a challenge or a crisis. Yeah. Because once you get through it, it upgrades you. Don't I learned all of my wisdom through hard times. I always get For upgraded sure. through my challenges. I've rarely got upgraded through having fun. You're absolutely right. So that's what I'm saying. So when God gives it to you, it looks like it looks like a disaster. It's like God, I ask for patience, but yeah, you put me in the most impatient situation because you're gonna earn your patience. Because when you earn it, it becomes a part of your attributes and your character forever. It's not a temporary gift like Lucifer does and make you kill yourself. It's not a gift. It's a hanging rope so you can get to hell. It's a trap. And then that's why I listen to this garbage rap music these days. They talk about the trap. You're celebrating a trap. I've never seen a mouse in a mouse trap happy to be in a mouse trap. I've never seen any animal happy to be in a trap. But yet we glorifying traps, trap music, trap this. I'm in a trap. I make money in the trap. I sleep in the trap. In the trap? What? You glorifying that? 
Just like when I was growing up, when things were good, you'd say, oh, that's cold. And then it went from cold to that's hot. And then it went from hot to that's fire. Then it went to fire to that's beast. Then it goes from beast to demon time. Show. Like, yeah, it's just, it progressed all the way to now they're on demon time. So they just blatantly out now. Damn. Yeah, you know, yeah, we went from fire to beast mode, from beast mode to demon time. Wow. They really snuck up on us. That's what Lucifer does. He sneaks it on you. That's what he does wow. in your life. He sneaks and takes away all your time. So you're so far from God, you think you're filthy, you can't hear his voice no more. Because you're getting distracted little by little, little by little, little by little away from God every day. That's the name of the game, people. It's called time. It's a trap. Get time. You can't even sacrifice your time, but you want godly results, but can't spend no time with them. That's why you end up in hell like I did. Hold on. Let me open my door for my daughter. Hold on. Yes. No, you're good. Go ahead. Yeah. So, people, I, I, I just... Don't play with it. Don't play with this. Do not play. You know, there, 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 uh, there is a river in hell, a lava. And the current it goes so fast. The current is just pushing, and it's people chained up in these currents. And it's just like a roller. They, uh, listen, the torture that's going on there, people, uh, like he was saying earlier, you don't even want your worst enemy to have it. I wouldn't even want, I, I don't care. There's nobody who deserves that. And I used to think the same thing. If God loved us, why would he put us in a place like this? But then he spoke in my heart and said, no, you put yourselves in a place like this. See, that's what's wrong with us humans. We don't take accountability for anything. We don't, take, we don't want to take responsibility or accountability for anything. Literally. We want everybody to take it easy on us, but we don't take it easy on anybody else. Right? We want to, you know, judge, don't give me the harsh sentence. Please have mercy on me. But if you was the judge, you'd be the first to smite that person with all you got. You did all, you did yeah. you see how uh, some of the folks came in? I, I'd heard through other NDEs seeing um, other folks arrive. Uh, I'm not sure if I can explain no, it properly. I, 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 listen, I was so focused on so terrorized. Yeah. I didn't see any drop-offs. Okay. I didn't see anything, but one thing I didn't know is that that place is growing even as we speak. Yeah. It would never be not enough room. Put it that way. Yeah. I, yeah. I know it's growing. That's why I think, yeah. I, I would say, I think hell is alive. Just the place itself. That's what I, I hear. Think, you know, the same way that darkness was alive. That's what, I mean, it's alive. It's death alive. Put it that way. <laughs> if that even makes any sense. Yeah. It's the death ground, alive. The ground is alive. Yeah. It's, you know, um, you know, and it's like, a, you know, got to the point where I was standing at this cliff. It's a lot more, but it's so it too gross to be talking. But I was standing at the end of this cliff and there were people from all races, men and women on this side and this side. But as I look, it was a little like path. It was a narrow path down and it was uh, like in a dead forest. It looked like the sand had been burned. It was gray and smoky. And like I even keep saying those trees even felt demonic. The trees weren't even like the trees here. They had no leaves and stuff, of course, but it was just a different, like, yeah, they were they were evil. But what got me, something said, look up. And I looked up, and that was it. And I got the hairs to stand up on my arm every time I think about it and, and see this gate. This gate was 80 to 100 feet tall, biggest gate i ever seen in my life. This gate was just, and it, it looked like it had, uh, it was ancient, very ancient gate, and it had strip jewels. Like, they used to be gems and stuff, and but it was all rusty and beat up and it had the snake, what we have as the, uh, the medical symbol with the two serpents intertwining with each other on the, all on the top of the bars. But then when I look, I knew instantly, it was like this castle mountain place. That was hell. You were on the outside? I was on the, all of that I've been through, it's just the outside. Whoa. Imagine that, everything, yeah, that that you can't even you can't even describe that. And that and I knew if I went to that place, it was a million times worse than where I was at. And I knew if I went past those bars, I am it's over with, over with. Even though I already knew it was over with. It's just like a double. You can't, I can't, you can't even describe yeah. it. But I knew that yeah. place was a million times worse, and I I can't even have nothing to describe the place that I was at. So wow. I can't even fathom. What goes on behind those gates? 
And so I'm looking down and I start to see a line of people. And I just, well, this is what makes me think the Lord was behind me this whole time because these people were chained together and on each side of them were like reptiles, like guards, like prison guards walking them on the chain to go to the gate. One of them looked, and I think he had it because he couldn't have saw us and been talking to us because nobody was talking to nobody where I was at. He must have been talking to the Lord because he looked up and he got everyone's attention. They start screaming at all of us, run, don't come here. Don't, I mean, they were screaming every language. And that's another thing, you know, all languages too. That's how I got the heads up of learning so many languages when I came back right now. So that's pretty cool too. But no, when you go over there, you, you, you know, all different languages. So you hear from every different language. They were screaming, tell them, don't come back, run, 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 run. And then when I look, I'll never forget because I said, I said it. I can hear it every time I say it, I said, holy moly. And I said, I had so much fear. That was the closest word because I didn't have no relationship with the Lord. But I knew he was around me. I always thought I loved God. But I loved the idea of God. I wasn't mature enough to have a relationship. That's what's wrong with people. They always say they love God. No, you don't. You love the idea of God. Because if you love him, you would make way more time and spend with him. Just keep that real to yourself. I'm just saying, I'm here to tell the truth. A lot of people say, oh, I love God, I love God, but you don't give him 20 minutes a day. Would you be with? A, would you be in a marriage that lasted like that? The only time he or she come to see you for 20 minutes, not even that, and they call it a real relationship? I think not. But no, so, you know, people, I just tell you, when I looked and I said, holy moly, all I felt a little spot on the back of my shoulder. It felt like a little, like a little nudge, but it was the most powerful hey uh, about- one, one second there's someone yeah. in the chat um if you're not able to see the chat exit the video just totally swipe out of the video kill your youtube come back into the chat and click the live chat button sorry it's, it's no you're they, fine you're fine they were trying to get my attention anyways keep going man I, it's, no. I, I didn't realize that that you were on the outside the whole time yeah man. so think about that just think about that. If the outside is undescribable and unbearable, unchallengeable, I, and I knew if if I was to get, I'm looking I'm at the gates, if I knew if I was to go past those gates, it is, whoo, this place is nothing compared to that. I can't, I'm telling you, people can't even fathom what I call pre-hell. They can't even fathom that. But the little, the little love, he touched me. He, I know the Lord. He touched me in the back of my shoulder. Just on the tip of his fingertip, has so much authority and so much love and so much power than the whole universe, just on the tip of his finger. The love that I felt, I, I think about it every day. That's what keeps me going every day because I want to get back to that. That little, I, I don't even know if it was a thousandth of a second that I felt him. It, it is beyond anything. It's beyond anything you can even, you can't even, well, his love for us and his power and his authority is beyond. That's all I, that's yeah. all I can tell you. It is, it is. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? <laughs> who wouldn't yeah, want the, to worship him? Like, the chat's telling even, me to, the chat's telling me to engage more with you, but I'm just listening to what you have to say. You, you've you got what you got to say, and I think everybody needs to hear it. So the folks are telling me to engage more with you. No, I want to hear what you have to say and not cut you off. Oh, no. I mean, if you have any questions, if they have any questions that I can answer while I have a few minutes, I'll be glad to. But uh, you were growing in my – you're good. I, and I, I, I just – no. I, you're uh, good. That love you all – that he has, because I felt it, and uh, all of a sudden, I felt that, and again, it was, boom, and I'd get slammed, right? But this time, it hurt pretty bad, because I was in a hospital bed when I came back to it. And this is the scary part, is because they were already kind of, they had people in the hallway. I heard a lot of noises in the hallway, and it felt like um, I was wearing a wetsuit. Like, if you put on eight different blue jean outfits, dipped them in ice cold water, and warm at the same time, that's how I felt. I really felt I was wearing my body. That's how I know this is a suit. It took me like two weeks to get over that feeling, that sensation of not being all the way in my body. It, I knew I was wearing, like you wearing clothes, that's how I felt I was wow. wearing my body. Yeah, that's how it feels. You knew I was wearing my body like I was wearing clothes. 
And it took two weeks for me to get over that feeling. Like, yeah, it, it was it was deep. But I can still smell. I can still smell hell. I can still hear it. And I was freaking out. The nurse looked at me. I looked at her. She comes stumbling out, screaming out something. Because the, they, they was wrapping it up. They thought it was over with. And I saw and they were stumbling, falling over stuff. And it was freaked me out because I didn't want to close my eyes again. I definitely didn't want to go back. So they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I ain't going back. They calm down, Mr. Morrow, calm down. I'm not going. What are you talking about? Let's stabilize. No, you ain't stabilizing nothing. I didn't want nothing from, I didn't want anything from these people to put me back to sleep because I was so terrified. And like I said, it took me weeks to get over the fact, but it lets me know that this, your body is the temple. You are not your body, people. You're not even close to your body. You're not. This is a vehicle so you can be registered here in this dimension. This is your temple. This is your vehicle so you can be here in this dimension. This life is just a bridge. It's just used to get over to the other side. Don't build your house on the bridge. The bridge is only used to get to the other side. Like this life, be in the world, but don't be of it. That's exactly what he's talking about. Don't get all your eggs. Don't put them here because you can't take nothing with you. And then you're going to go to eternity bankrupt because you don't have any true value to you. You don't have universe value. You only have temporary value, which is not exchangeable in eternity. So that's why your relationship with him is giving you all the jewels that you need so you can exist in eternity on the other side, being productive, not just being waste, tortured and destroyed over and over and over and over again. And you, you delete it. You delete it from the universe. You when, delete when, it. when did it, when did he snatch you back? When I was at the gate, when I was looking at the gate. Yeah. And I, I told you, I never forget because I said in my mind, I, I, I didn't know who to scream out for. I just said, Holy moly. Like when I caught the realization of what yeah. that was, I was looking at. And then instantly I felt that it was like a little tap on my back. But the tap, I tell you, just that little piece of love changed the whole trajectory of what I've been searching for. That little, it wow. is so powerful. That little, that love that he has in his fingertips, like I say, it's more of in his fingertips than it is in the whole universe. You just know the power. It's beyond power. It's not even power. It's beyond power. Wow. It powers the power to make it power. Put it that way. It's like it's beyond. It's a whole that even light there, dark, the, everything in the spirit realm is beyond the scope of what we can do. Even colors, they have colors over there that I saw in hell that yeah. don't that I can't even explain. I don't even know how to begin to they out yeah. the, the fabrics of our perception. I don't even know you can't compare it to any other color here. Yeah. It don't even look like nothing you can compare it to. Yeah. You see what I mean? I saw all kinds of stuff that you can't you can't describe this stuff. Cause there's no human words or language that are suitable for it. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. I'm just telling you there are different colors. You all that are going to blow your mind. Like they yeah. are completely new colors, like new That's colors. That's what I hear. Uh, yeah. Uh, some of the, some of the heaven NDEs, they saw the most beautiful colors that they couldn't explain. And, um, man, it's, it's, Though I had never heard the one about coming in back into the body and feeling so mm -hmm. awkward, but it makes total sense. Yeah. Like, uh, like you feel like outfit. you're. It was yeah, nasty. Like I you, feel horrible. I feel like I was wearing ice cold blue jean outfits, heavy, nasty. I felt horrible. Wow. And I thought, it was jail. yeah, was like I felt when I was in hell, but it was a different, it's a different feeling. That's how I knew yeah. I was back too. It was just, yeah. It was bad. Wow. It was bad. And it took a couple of weeks for me to get comfortable. <sighs> yes. So I just want everybody Man. to, you know, make it make it your opportunity. You tried everything else. What is wrong with giving our Lord Yahshua Jesus Christ a shot? Just give him one week. Give him one week. Be obedient. Just ask him to come to your life. Say, Lord, I don't believe in you. Show up and show out. He will. Oh, that's what I'm going to say. He loves it. <laughs> he loves it. People get terrified because he shows up. And they can see him. He don't show up like no ghost. I'm talking about when he talks, things move in your life. You will know. You yeah. will trust me. You will know. You will know when he responds to you. Trust he's me. very, he he's no very, ghost. he's very vocal right now too. Let me tell you Amen. what, folks. He is stepping up his presence. You know, like I said before, sometimes, you know, two years ago, it would take maybe a month would go by in between um, signs and signals and whatnot, just because I, I'm not sure what was going on, but it, I feel like we're so close to something. He is trying everything to get the blind's attention. 
He is. Yeah. I mean, the signs are everywhere. It's several times a day that I'm like, wow. Wow. Yeah, but at the name of the game is distraction. Yep. So if they can distract you of things with non importance, you're not going to even be here to see the signs. Or even if you see the signs, you're not going to know it's a sign because you don't even know it's a sign because you haven't even studied the revelations to even know to be looking for that as a sign. Amen. Because you spend your time on video games, basketball games, the club, uh, pornography, you know, just uh, weed, drinks, whatever you do, it don't add nothing to your eternal career. It doesn't Man. add anything on your eternal resume. Everybody, no, you're not hired. You, you don't qualify. Say. It don't. You don't have enough experience. <laughs> you don't. And we see folks, how you use your time. You know, folks that, yeah, that know people, people, people that know <laughs> folks that need a that need a wake up call. This is why I wanted him to be on the show because he's made it crystal clear and he's just confirming everything that I've been telling you guys for months. But this is the best explanation of a wake up call. Man, if you got folks that are struggling to believe, have them watch this. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I got to say, I'm here to just deliver a package. I will honestly implore you to believe me. I don't want you to take a chance on eternity. Cause that's what you're doing when you, every yeah. day you neglect him you're taking it you're playing russian roulette you all mm -hmm. you're playing russian roulette and i don't think y'all know how serious there's no coming back from this there's no reincarnation that's from the hell pits of hell itself there's yep. no one saved always saved that's from the pits of hell itself yeah okay all this idolatry worshiping the world putting everything before him that's from the pits of hell itself yep. okay you're thinking you're better than others. You want to gossip about people, right? You want to be judgmental instead of using discernment and positive righteous judgment. That will send you to hell yourself. Yep. Okay. You being selfish instead of selfless, that's definitely a ticket to hell. Yep. Okay. You, you, you're you being nice and, and credibility just for the world, but behind the doors, God knows your heart is evil. That's definitely sending you to hell. You can't get you, you can't work your way to paradise here. It doesn't work like that. Either he knows you or he don't. He don't. Yeah, and and I tell I tell everybody the same thing every night. Love is the answer. You just have a personal relationship with Christ, and you love everybody. You forgive them, and you just love them regardless. Have keep that relationship. Moving. Keep that yeah. relationship with Christ, and once you have Him in you, all the things that you used to worry about that you were going to have to change and do, because folks will psych themselves out like i can't do all the things that i have to do to be a believer you don't have to once he's in your heart you, got you naturally you naturally change you don't yeah. want to do those things that you struggled with before right yeah that's what i'm saying you all all he asks you to do is invite him in he's gonna do yeah. all the hard and heavy lifting yeah i'm just telling yeah, you're you absolute, yeah, i'm just you're telling absolutely you right. all he wants so what Man, do you have to lose? Like I was just asking you, you know, and yeah, thank you for having me, brother. I, I you know, Man, I, it was awesome. You have me back on, man. I, I enjoyed this a lot. You know, I would love to. Come oh, back you're on. welcome. Anytime. Yeah. We have a, we have a lot of guests that are regulars, folks that I just, I click right along with. And yeah, man, man I, I would love to come back. You're welcome. It'd be a blessing. I know everybody that's uh, listening uh, would definitely want it. And, um, um, if you haven't already, uh, go on our social site. We have a, a private social media site where it's just our uh, our community, and okay. there's a there's a lot of us there. It's not just a few. There's there's a lot of folks there. But the the only rule I have is there's no hatred or any of that stuff. We just Amen. love, and the only thing we're there for is to fellowship with Christ and to just share news and, you know, talk about stuff, but there's no negativity. There's no hatefulness. There's no Amen. boasting. There's no, there's none of that bullying stuff. Cause, uh, you know, I'm very selective who we allow on there and we have a large community on there. Nice. So. Nice. Good. Amen. I'm definitely going to join. Definitely. Also, you guys can go to www.blessedtobechosen.com. We're also uh, uh, narrowpathsociety.org. Um, yeah, we're doing a lot of good things. You can catch us on the Narrow Path Society on Facebook. Join our group if you want. I I'll, put on, all, uh, every, I'll put it yeah, all. I'll put it all in the description. Saturday. 
Okay, cool, cool. I, I, you know what, brother? This was a blessing. This was a blessing. I wish you and your audience nothing but love, courage, in the name of Yahshua, also known as Jesus Christ, and that we're in a war. We're out of time, and stop playing. Don't put God first. Put him in the yeah. middle of your life. That's beyond first. Yeah. Make him the yeah, center you know, of your life. Honestly, I'll, I'll set you up your own section on our social platform that you can drive my community to your community and then you can drive them to mine and yes it, you know what it, it, it's witnesses. all about just reach it's all about reaching the most people that That's you can all, yes so you know what we'll talk about that let's give each other a horn. hey yeah let's talk about that that sounds good we need to get as many people to the lord as possible that's my only job is to get people to the lord i i Amen. exist for nothing else so yes i'm i'm in i'm in my brother thank you and thank, thank you so audience. much for coming out Oh, thank you very much. You all stay blessed and put him in the center of your life right now. All right. All Amen. right. Thank you. Ha Amen. Have a good night, brother. You as well, my right. brother. Bye. What you guys think? Man, that was intense. Man, that was intense. I've been... Um, I had saw him. I can't remember what I initially saw him. Um, I, I think some of our viewers had recommended it uh, for me to see him. But honestly, I don't go looking for anyone in specific. This is kind of funny how it works. Is that I just open my YouTube app. And whatever pops up in my feed, I feel like it's there for a reason. And it's... It, 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 I, Frankly, that's just how I do it. I just open my YouTube app and there's things there for a reason. And I will simply just, you know, I, I, I watch it. And the stuff that, you know, it's it's almost every video. I feel like it's been made for me because I feel like God is literally guiding the information that is coming to me. And what's even more crazy is that Things that I will be talking about one night, other channels will be saying the same thing. Stuff that I haven't heard before. Um, and, you know, we haven't shared information with each other. We just end up saying the same thing. And that's what's even more crazy. Is we're sharing the same information. <laughs> and uh, it's just awesome. It's it's just incredible to see everything come together. Just everything come together. It's just it's just fantastic, guys. It is just in, incredible. It's um, I don't know what else to say. I hope you guys enjoyed um, having that gentleman. Uh, it's you know I've been. You know, talking to him for a few weeks now. And his testimony, it lines up with everything that I have been studying. And that's why I wanted him on. You know, there's a, there's a lot of testimonials that I see uh, with the NDEs. And something always maybe doesn't check out just right. There has been a lot of good ones. And I share those ones that are good. But his resonated with me extra hard. For real, it was, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. But what he was sharing is information that everybody needs to know. And if you have someone in your life that's struggling to, to come to the Lord, show them that video. They may say that it's outlandish and difficult to believe. It is what it is. It is true. And folks, there's so many people asleep at the wheel. So many people asleep at the wheel. So many. I have people that I'm close to. And if they're watching, I wish you would wake up. I wish that you would wake up. I wish you would allow God to come into your heart. Uh, there's folks that are close to me that say everything is normal. There's nothing going on. It's, 
life, you know, the the world has always been a dark place, is what they say. Yeah, it has been a dark place, but things are changing. And if and if you can't see that you're changing, if you can't see the things that are changing around you, that means that means the enemy has you deceived where you're spiritually blind and you can't see it. But I promise you, it is happening. God is stepping up his efforts to get people's attention. I it We are getting close, folks. Uh, uh, I don't know when. I couldn't tell you. I'm not a date setter. But for folks that have been walking with Christ and have that personal relationship, I know you know that things are getting close. We can, all of us that have that relationship, we can feel it. It is close. The time is running out. I feel like it's, it's, it could be any day. So I live every day like it's my last. And the folks that I'm close to that refuse to pay attention, I beg you, please. I, I don't want you to end up in that place that he just described. You may think that that's a bunch of BS and that guy was being fantastic. He's not. It's reality. Guys, please pay attention. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to call it a wrap. My daughter's knocking at the door and uh, I'm all worked up over this (laughs) because I know that guy's telling the truth. And I know there's so many people that are asleep at the wheel that think everything is just normal. It's not, guys. It's not. And uh, there's some folks that are going to have a very, very stern wake-up call. Reality is going to hit them like a brick. And I hope that it's not too late when it does. I hope you still have that option when reality smacks you. But he's given us all the signs that we need. I mean, holy moly, the signs couldn't be more obvious. I mean, every day, the signs literally are just appearing out of nowhere. I can't keep up with the signs. Like I said, I used to go a month. You know, rewind a few years, you know, 21, 2022, Sometimes I'd go a month without seeing stuff and Watchful and I started putting together a timeline because, all right, we're starting to see some signs. And every time we saw a sign, we'd mark it on the timeline. You About once a month. There's so much of them these days, I'm losing track. They are piling on. So everybody have a wonderful night. I'm not sure who we have tomorrow night. I know we have someone. I just, uh, I don't have the calendar pulled up in front of me. But uh, I'll post tomorrow and let everybody know what's on deck. But love you guys. Remember, salvation's a free gift available for everybody. And I'll see you tomorrow.